was just such a crazy time. We were just young kids skateboarding. It's like all we did. If you're a good skater in Milwaukee or fucking, you know, Chicago or anywhere, you'd move to San Francisco to try to make it as a skater in the 90s. It's just how it was. And that's basically where I grew up. In the spotlight of skateboarding, me and all my friends, which is pretty dope. I'd wake up and like as if I was gonna go to school or something, I'd just go down to Barcadero and skate. And that's what we'd do, we'd just hang out, drink 40s, skate. And that was kind of just like me being a rebel, you know, like, and being a skater. But that's why I'm where I am now. If that never happened, I probably would never have done a spike up. I basically just grew up skateboarding and all my friends, we used to skate on, you know, different skate teams. Um, everyone had all these different sponsors. Um, I always had an idea like, man, it'd be tight if everyone skated on the same team. My best friend, uh, Mike Carroll, he started uh, girl skateboards. I was always inspired by that. I was like, wow, that's crazy. You started your own company, that's fucking sick. I started the company in 1998, and then, you know, I got all my friends to skate for it. And luckily, my friend had a t-shirt printer, like just a small business in San Francisco, so he printed me t-shirts. I got some hats made. Um, from there, we started making regular hardware, and then bearings, and grip tape, and all kinds of skate accessories, and um, that was it. About two years doing it in San Francisco, just because the name was popping at the time. My friend Mike Carroll from Girl Skateboards asked me to move to LA so they could distribute Diamond. So I was like, fuck, you know, that's like the biggest opportunity in my life. So I got off the phone with them and I packed my bags and went to LA the very next day. Just like left. <laughs> I was like, later. You know, we opened our first store on Fairfax in 2006. It was different, there was no one really down here. Supreme was here. Uh, they opened a few years earlier. And uh, there wasn't really anyone else open. It's crazy because now, I mean, there's tons of stores opening up. Kids travel here from all over the world just to see it. Like, it's kind of like the mecca of street fashion, I guess. There isn't another street in the world that's like Fairfax. There's actually kids now, like especially the Odd Future kids, they grew up on Fairfax, which is a trip. Like, cause I have pictures of Tyler and Taco and all these guys, like little ass dudes chilling at our store, and now they're like grooming in some big rap group, and they're like famous and shit, but it's just funny cause like, they really like grew up on the block, it's so funny. Having these people wear our stuff, I mean, it's really important. Um, you know, because kids, are, they're really influential. I mean, everybody is, you know, you see someone wearing something and if they're dope and you like them, like Jay-Z wearing a diamond hat, they'll be a Jay-Z fan, they'll go buy a diamond hat. I and mean, it's just the way it is, so. It's just really like skateboarding and um, hip hop and fashion, you know, it all just over the last 10 years has really just been merging. And it's always kind of been like an urban skate type of brand that just, you know, as it got more popular in skateboarding, it got more popular in streetwear as well. Staying connected with our fans and the Diamond Lifers and whoever, it's like super important. It's just what we do. I, I don't understand brands that don't. It's like a family and like, we meet them, they come to the store. It's just dope to know your customer. And what's crazy now is that since we've been around for 15 years, kids are coming in and being like, yeah, it's crazy, my dad, you know, ever since I've been growing up as a kid, he's been a fan of Diamond. And like, they're Diamond fans. So now there's like another generation of Diamond fans. It's like a clique, a Diamond Life, it's awesome. It's just like Diamond Life.